up in tonight's prime time, Tishik Enda Kenny will be live in studio. In a wide ranging interview, we'll be asking questions about Irish water, today's jailings, the economy, debt, taxes, health, and much more besides. Hello there and welcome to Primetime. Well, Enda Kenny has been Taoiseach for almost four years now. And this weekend, his party's national conference is taking place. In a few minutes, I'll be interviewing the Taoiseach. First, though, here's our political correspondent, Katie Hannan. Four years ago, with days to go before an historic election, there was a voracious appetite for change, for someone to restore trust in politics and offer hope and stability to the country. This is the voice of the people having been declared about the kind of Ireland and the kind of government they want for the future. In those heady early days, it was all about a new way of doing politics. Pay cuts for the Taoiseach and his cabinet, ministerial marks pointedly withdrawn. I enter into a covenant with the Irish people. In this current crisis, still full of many unknowns, honesty is not just our best policy, it is our only policy. Within 48 hours, the newly minted Taoiseach was setting out his stall in Brussels. Being two days in government with a very strong mandate from the Irish people for an improvement in the terms of the IMF EU deal. Within months, it began to look like Enda would be a lucky general. A second bailout for Greece meant a better deal for Ireland. When I was elected as Taoiseach, I committed the government to renegotiating the terms of this deal in terms of the interest rate and flexibility uh, and an easing of the burden for Ireland. This has been achieved at today's, uh, today's meeting. But the economy remained fragile and unemployment was still rising. The Taoiseach addressed the nation directly. Right now, the state is spending 16 billion a year more than it is taking in. This problem will not be fixed unless we take action to bridge this gap. The following June, there was what we were told was game-changing news from Brussels. It's now the policy of the European authorities to separate uh, how banking debt is treated. And a deal on the former Anglo-Irish bank's promissory notes. There were controversies along the way and humble pie to be eaten. Sometimes in politics, you get a, you know, you, you, you get you get a wallop uh, in in, elect, in the electoral process. Uh, I accept the verdict of the people. Nevertheless, they got to where they said they were going. Ireland will exit the EU IMF bailout tonight. Round about then, things started to go horribly wrong. He lost a minister and a guard, the commissioner. There would be accusations of cack-handed cronyism. Enda Kenny and his government seem to have adopted all of the worst practices of, of previous Fianna Fáil governments, all of the skullduggery and cronyism. As well as accusations of cold-hearted decision-making. The economic data was spectacularly strong. Growth levels not seen since the economy collapsed. I believe that the worst in historic terms is behind us. But there was little respite from the relentless bad news. The announcement of a construction strategy came too late to stave off a major homeless crisis, while scenes of chaos returned to the emergency departments of our busiest hospitals. And, of course, for months now, there's been one story that, despite a massive government U-turn, stubbornly refuses to go away. Katie Hannan there. Welcome, Tishik, and thanks for agreeing to change your schedule. To your national conference this weekend, the, all the key indicators are saying the economy is going in the right direction, the Troika are gone. Your party should be doing very well. But the recent polls show that you're scrapping with Sinn Féin at about the mid-20s. Why is that? Well, I don't really have any great interest in polls, really. The uh, mandate given to the government just four years ago was very clear. It followed uh, the most catastrophic economic circumstances that any government ever took over in the history of our state. Uh, unemployment rampant, emigration hemorrhaging, banks uh, collapsing, negative equity and thousands of jobs lost. And that mandate was to fix our public finances and to um, put our country back to work. 
the choices that we had to make were very difficult and affected hundreds of thousands of people all over the country and still do. But I'm glad to say that we've, uh, we've made a lot of progress. So the challenge for the government of Fine Gael and Labour is to secure that recovery uh, and not allow a situation where we drift back to the bad old days. So from that perspective, this government has brought political stability, which is absolutely essential for confidence and for investment. That leads to economic growth, okay. it leads to jobs, and jobs are the key to the future for everybody. Okay. How come you made such an almighty mess of Irish water? Well, I'd be the first to say we did get everything right. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, an enormous uh, undertaking to have uh, completed in two and a half years. Clearly, we now see the evidence of the scale of the challenge uh, that was neglected for 50 years in the programme being set out by Irish Water to fix the leaks, to provide clean water of high quality for consumers, for industry, for business and for people all over the country. OK, but today, Thijic, we saw five water protesters jailed and yet not one banker in this country has been jailed. Is that fair? Well, the point is that in this country, which is democratic, which you have a democracy, we respect the right of, uh, of protest, uh, but the courts are independent in the way they make their decisions. We have a banking inquiry going on dealing with the uh, events leading up to uh, the banking situation. Uh, and in due course, it remains to be seen whether cases are taken to court But I hear you, but I'm just wondering, I mean, if you stand back and just look at it, we have five water protesters in jail, and yet the people who brought this country to its knees, not a single banker was jailed. So that's probably why there's angry and anger out there. Well, not only that, but you had a situation where the previous government uh, sunk 30 billion into Anglo-Irish and uh, Irish nationwide money that is gone from the people that can never be recovered. In contrast to that, this government intends to recover every cent that we put into the restructured banks and of I AIB hear that, and just Bank on of that, Ireland. And I'll move on. Do you think it's fair that the bankers aren't in jail and the water protesters are? Well, That's all. The courts are the, are the, are the completely independent uh, body that make those decisions and we abide by that law. We have a banking inquiry going on into these very complex, controversial and sensitive issues. But, but is there a sense, Tijek, that there is almost an arrogance, a sense that your government is out of touch with the anger of people, hence the huge water protest marches that we saw? Uh, on the contrary, we're very much clued in to the, uh, to the concerns of the people. That's why the government reacted very positively uh, to a point where the uh, charge for a single person now is one euro fifteen cent per week and three euro for two adults or more and the price is fixed out until the beginning of 2019 but it's also relevant uh, to point out that we cannot go on with a situation that was neglected for 50 years where you have very many sewage schemes and treatment plants that are completely outdated where we have hundreds of kilometres of, of pipes that are inadequate and are, are not giving people quality also, water. But also, after that almighty mess, you almost added insult to injury by rewarding the man who presided over this omni-shambles, Phil Hogan, and sent him to Europe as our commissioner. Well, the government made the decision in respect of setting up the, 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 uh, the uh, Irish water entity. Uh, that's subject to regulation and the, uh, the um, market corporation the test and all of that. Um, Commissioner Hogan, I expect, will prove to be an outstanding Minister for Agriculture in what is a very fast-growing sector with enormous uh, potential and implications for Ireland. Families in this country, they've seen, as you know, savage cuts to their incomes, never mind the USC, but savage cuts to their incomes. And workers are saying in their pay packages, you talk a lot about an economic recovery, they're not seeing any shred of evidence of that in their take-home pay packs. Well, I'll point out to you that uh, the reason we had to make all of these decisions, which were very difficult for everybody in the country, uh, was that you could grow your economy by creating jobs. Remember that the job is the avenue out of unfairness and uh, uh, inequality. It provides dignity, uh, financial independence and an opportunity to contribute for families and for communities. We expect to have full employment by 2018 but with and 40,000 jobs this year. That's not what I asked you. I was talking about the people who were lucky enough maybe to hold on to their jobs. Mm -hmm. But as you know, their incomes were shredded in the past seven years. 
and they want to know when they're going to see any significant well, view of this economic recovery well, we he uh, hear about I, I, in their pay packs. The fact that we've made the difficult decisions that we've made has allowed us in the, in the last budget to start the process of implementing our tax reduction policy. It's central to what Fine Gael have to do and what the government are doing, and that is uh, to make work more attractive, to make it pay. We've taken uh, 420,000 out of the USC at the lower level. That will be 500,000 this year. We reversed the minimum wage, took uh, uh, 300,000 um, who reversed that decision. Okay. Uh, and we've focused in terms of the um, lower and middle income groups as to, as to where that, we want the benefits to be seen. If you take someone on the minimum wage after the last budget, which you've mm -hmm. just been talking about, they got an extra 170 euro per annum. That's just going to be effectively wiped out by the water charges. So after the last budget, people on a minimum wage in this country are getting one euro one euro extra per month. Yes, well, we, we, obviously the choices were never easy, but in the budget for 2016, we expect to, to, uh, to do the same thing again and to continue the tax reduction policy, giving, giving uh, people greater income, which grows the economy and allows jobs to be, uh, to be created. I'd make the point to you as well that the government, for the first time, have set up a low-paid commission uh, that will report in July, and the government will make its decisions in July, and will see to it that, uh, that employers uh, do not suffer as a consequence. Why aren't you supporting Greece in their desire and attempts to get a debt right down? I mean, surely if they got it, we could expect to get it. Is it because you are very worried if they get it, it will prove that parties on the left, like Sinn Féin and Syriza, were right all along and you were wrong all along? Well, Ireland is in a very different position than Greece. We understand and empathise with the humanitarian difficulties they have. Ireland I exited our bailout at the end of 2013, the fastest growing economy in Europe. Uh, we have still have a long way to go to secure our recovery. It's fragile and it's incomplete. But I think it's important to point out that Ireland being in a bailout programme was able to negotiate a 50 billion reduction in our borrowing requirements, 4 billion less this year than was predicted in 2011. But we have a huge debt burden, Tisha. Greece has a huge debt bur burden. Mm -hmm. Surely it's in our country's interests that if they get a deal, we could expect to get a deal too, so you should support them. Are you putting your party's interests over the government's, over the country's interests? Well, on the contrary, we, we made it perfectly clear uh, that bailout programmes do bring conditions with them and, and the Greek Prime Minister made it perfectly clear that he doesn't want to leave the euro, he does not want to break his contract and he's looking for an opportunity uh, to negotiate a sustainable future for Greece. We support that and I do expect that the meeting tomorrow in Brussels will be a long and difficult meeting. But as Ashoka Modi said the other day, mm -hmm. um, he believed we could have got a better deal, a superior deal is what he said. We have meanwhile the European Commission saying they didn't block us burning bondholders. So at the end of the day we got one of the worst possible deals. We got skewered by Europe. Well I point out the consequence of where we are. Uh, we're now growing at 5% last year. Uh, we have secured major deals in terms of uh, lessening the borrowing requirement of 50 billion. We secured the deal uh, in June 2012 in respect of the option of direct recapitalisation and breaking the link between sovereign and bank debt, which was part of your video in, in, in the beginning. And we're now moving on to make decisions in the best interest of the taxpayer, to get back every cent that this government put into the restructured banks. But we never got a good deal. I mean, did you actually ever ask for a write-down on our banking debt? Well, the deal that we got included being able to buy out 18 billion worth of IMF loans, which over the term of those loans saves you, the taxpayer, 1.5 yeah. billion. It's a long-standing mortgage. I mean, did you ever demand you, from them a write-down on our banking debt? You can't, you, you cannot, you cannot expect to get that kind of deal but did you ask unless, you're able, unless you're able to negotiate. The conditions, as I said, that this government inherited were unprecedented and we're now facing a future where we need to secure our recovery uh, because it is fragile and we're not going back but on, on what happened. But did you ask for it? We negotiated a 50 billion write down in terms of borrowing requirements. We were able to buy out our IMF loans. Uh, we reversed many of the decisions that were made by the Troika by replacing them with better deals for our people. But and the why of making those decisions, and this is very important. But it's very important as well to say, did, did 
we ever ask for a write down on our banking debt and if not why not what we when, when this government was elected we were in a bailout program mm. we negotiated with the troika time after time and the deals that we got and the agreements that we reached have us in a position where we're growing at almost five percent where we've created eighty thousand new jobs where we're going to have full employment by 2018 where job opportunities are now growing rapidly, but we want to spread that throughout the country. Okay, but this if we is very important didn't in even facing our future. Bother asking for a deal on our banking debt. What's the point in being a poster girl for austerity, or you being the best boy in the class and getting patted on the head no, by I, Sarkozy? I, I reject that. If we got scared no, by I, Europe, I reject that completely, Miriam. We were able to buy out our IMF loans. As I said, we negotiated 50 billion less in borrowing requirements. Our interest rates have fallen. We have, uh, as I say, created 80,000 jobs and we're moving on uh, to full employment by 2018. That's where we need to be. But the point I make to you as well is that we wouldn't have been able to do that if we didn't have political stability, if we didn't have economic stability, because it brings about the investment and the opportunity to create jobs. And for me, this is all about men and women having sustainable jobs for the future. That's the road to prosperity okay. and that's where we need to be. A key part of Fine Gael's reputation, justified or not, was that, unlike as people said about Fianna Fáil, you weren't into stroke politics. How do you think that reputation is doing? Well, we've changed, we've changed the rules here. Uh, anybody who wishes to be appointed to any board now has to apply through stateboards.ie are independently vetted and accredited by the Public Appointment Service. I'm very glad that that has happened. But meanwhile, we had primary care centres being placed in the former Minister for Health Constituency, a young Fine Gael activist from your own parish appointed to the Board of Solace, the appointment of John McNulty to Emma. That's stroke politics. But you can't have a situation where, because of a person's political affiliation, that it denies them forever the right to, to uh, work to serve their country, if that be so. As I say, everybody now, anybody in the country who wants to be appointed to a state board must apply through the public system. And they're vetted completely independently of the political system. Uh, and that's the way, that's, that's the way it is at now, and that's, that's an important change. At the time of the McNulty debacle, you apologised. What did you actually apologise for? I apologised for the perception between politics and appointments to state boards. But was, did you apologise for the fact that you knew it was a stroke at the time but you did it anyway? I made my apology in, in, in the doll and we've moved on and changed the rules and regulations for everybody for the future and that's the way it should be now. But do you regret that it was a stroke? I, I've, said, I've said on many occasions there are things uh, that we fail to achieve in many ways. Um, you can't get everything right. It's not, I'm, 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 I'm making the point that the perception of the link between politics and appointments is now broken. It's completely independent and vetted independently. To turn to health, your one big idea, universal health insurance, has been dumped. We've more crowding in A&E and we've longer waiting lists. Do you feel personally ashamed that the health service you promised so much for has regressed under your reign? No, I feel personally challenged by it because this is, uh, this is an, an enormous uh, requirement. It's not about money, actually. It's about structural changes and management changes. We've done quite a lot in, in, in the health area. We've set up the hospital groups. They will evolve into trusts. You are opening a primary care centre every month. We've set aside money, ring fence for many sensitive areas like mental health. The minister's looking very carefully at the, uh, at the task force dealing with um, uh, delayed discharges and waiting lists. Uh, clearly, this is the first budget in, in many years where there's been a modest increase in the, uh, in the budget to attempt to regulate that. We allocated 25 million for... Um, which you directly contributed to the waiting discharges. lists by a populist move on consultants' pay, which you've now had to reverse. Well, consultants' pay, I'm glad, has been agreed. The moratorium has been lifted in respect of the appointment of nurses and paramedics and other medical services. And I hope that the appointment of those people will make a big impact on, uh, on reducing waiting lists and providing the services that people need. And okay. I'd make this point to you. The plan that we're following here is to bring about a single tier health system where people get medical treatment for their needs based on their medical okay, requirements. It seems a long way off the at the moment for many people. Well, minister Let looked me at ask it, you something else. Sorry, the Minister looked at it very carefully uh, and he said we cannot implement this okay. in the timescale set out so it's a long period. Why did you send the Secretary General of the Department of Justice to the guard the Commissioner's house but wasn't effectively to sack him? Well that's the subject of a commission of inquiry under Mr Justice Fennelly. Uh, very serious matters were brought to my attention uh, that uh, I felt should be, should be investigated uh, and for my part I'm very clear that I acted responsibly in all my dealings in that matter. Okay, simple question which is a yes or no. Were you one of the three people that were called to give evidence to the 
Family Commission because of conflicts of accounts before the judge? Well, all the matters uh, relevant to a commission of investigation and inquiry are confidential. But let were you one of those three? Let me say that I'm very clear uh, in my response to the, uh, to the um, Commission of Inquiry and to Mr Justice Fennelly. Uh, I've published the interim report that he sent. I've uh, authorised him as a sponsoring minister for a longer time to do the, uh, the work that he has set out to do. Are you worried that the same-sex marriage referendum may not go through because the recent polls are showing a very soft yes vote? Well, I hope it will go through. Uh, it's, this is about uh, tolerance and respect and understanding and sensitivity. Um, most members in the Oireachtas are very much in favour of this. Uh, it's, a, it's a question that will be um, put very clearly to the people. I support this very strongly. Uh, it, it sets out our image of a very tolerant and inclusive Ireland. Uh, and I do hope that the support holds up and that the referendum is, is, is passed and adopted by the people. Do you have a date for it, Chad? I expect it will be on the 22nd of May. 22nd of May. I know your stated preferred option after the next election would be to go back into government with Labour. If the numbers don't stack up and the choice was Fianna Fáil or Sinn Féin, which would you opt for? Well, I opt for the Labour Party. We brought economic stability. I know, but if that doesn't work stability. out. Uh, I, under no circumstances should the Fianna Fáil Party be back in government. They wrecked this country twice. Uh, the choice would be very clear here. Do the people want uh, political stability, economic stability, progress and prosperity, or do they want to hand it back to those who wrecked our economy and those who would cause chaos and instability? But if it was the lesser of two evils, you would probably not want Sinn Féin to go into government, so are you likely to opt for Fianna Fáil? Well, I never, I never speculate on the outcome of, uh, of any election, but my choice is the Labour Party in government along with Fine Gael. We've had to rescue this country from an economic abyss on three occasions in the last 40 years. On the night you were elected, Taoiseach, you said Paddy likes to know what the story is. There is a feeling that maybe, unlike your Minister for Health, Leo Varadkar, who's a very straight talker, that people feel sometimes you're more inclined towards spin over substance, or as Miriam Lord today said, speaking at length but actually saying nothing at all. Well, you know, we've had to deal with some very difficult economic circumstances and conditions over the last four years. We have dealt with issues that were swept under the carpet for a very long time, like the Magdalene situation or Pyrrhus or Priory Hall, the mother and baby homes. These are not uh, easy things to deal with. Uh, they've all been dealt with by government. We've had some very difficult pieces of legislation. Uh, I, I, I don't take the, uh, I don't take the, the view at all about uh, not be, uh, being afraid of the challenge of this. It was never going to be easy. I never said it would be a bed of roses, but I'm very happy to okay. see the progress our country is making. Final question. You've spoken a lot tonight about what you feel you've done well. What has been your biggest failure as Thieship so far? Well, the job is not finished. Uh, the, the mandate I got was to fix our finances no, but and your put biggest our country failure. working. Uh, I don't contemplate failure. Uh, as in anything else, if nobody's, nobody's perfect nor am I. Uh, and all the achievements that we set out in terms of our programme haven't been, haven't been achieved yet. The job is not finished and the focus of my government for the remainder of the okay. lifetime of this government will be relentlessly on continuing to create okay. jobs, build up our economy and allow people uh, to, um, to have, uh, to, to have uh, an opportunity to raise their families okay, and contribute to their country. Thank you for coming in tonight. Thank you very much. David. The row over water protests escalated today with the jailing of five people after they were found to have breached a court order. The order from last November prevented them from interfering with workers installing metres. Today in court, their barrister said they were aware of the order and of the potential consequences. So, is this a crackdown on the right to protest or the upholding of the rule of law? We'll be discussing that in a moment, but first, this report from Mark Cotlin. From North Dublin, through months of protesting and tonight into the prison system, it's been a long road for the five protesters jailed. How dare they think they can send innocent people to prison and the government has sent them. The five are part of an eclectic group based in Donamede. Months ago, several of the group were ordered through an injunction not to interfere with water meter installers. They're just injunction, none of us say that we can't interfere. 
That's Mick Baddy, one of the five, speaking in November. The injunction against him and the others granted to the meter installation company GMC Sierra was soon extended to stop them coming within 20 metres of a company work area. Another of the five is Bernie Hughes, a United Left candidate at the last local election. Then there's Damien O'Neill, a private security guard from Coolock. Okay. Everyone's keeping the radio for water. And Derek Byrne of Dublin says no. He's no for calling Michael D. Higgins a... And the last of the five is Paul Moore. They chose not to abide by the 20 metre boundary ordered by the court. Here's footage of some of the group doing just that. Paul Murphy TD, for one, felt they were doing the right thing. Where these orders, uh, these injunctions have been given, to the likes of GMC Sierra, or if they're given to other water metering installers at a later stage, I think people are, are right to breach them. But they're not the only ones protesting, far from it. Another week and another vocal anti-water charge protest. Obviously, the government supports legitimate protest. The vast majority of protests have been peaceful. Some have been massive. The government is on the run. The government will concede before the end of the year. The vast majority have been uneventful, though not all. This footage posted online shows the Thonishta being hit with a water balloon. And vast numbers of people have attended marches. Tonight, main roads in the capital were blocked in protest against the decision to jail. What happens next is anyone's guess. That report from Mark Coughlin. I'm joined now in the studio by Labour Senator Lorraine Higgins and Socialist Party TD Ruth Coppinger. Uh, Ruth Coppinger, the five people who were jailed, or four were jailed and, and one the, the order was uh, stayed for a couple of days, but the five individuals knew what they were doing, they knew what the consequences were, they knew this was inevitable if they kept doing what they were doing, didn't they? Well, what they were doing was peacefully protesting in communities where metres were being installed. These are metres of no benefit to them or to residents who are having them imposed on them against their will. They're only of benefit to one company, GMC Sierra, mm. owned by Ireland's richest man. He's a tax exile, by the way. Mm. And by the way, none of the people who were charged were charged for any sort of violence or abuse. I think well, that's so, needs I'm, to be I'm sorry, made that, very that's, clear. That's, if you don't what mind, that's not, that's not the question, for, I actually. No, but I, it's very important that that's known by people. What they were charged with was breaching an injunction Yes, and the for judge said. 20 meters within yeah, the judge said he saw evidence of harassment and intimidation. He said the people involved were harassing, obstructing, and doing everything they could to prevent works being carried out, and the actions were unfair and cowardly. That's what the judge said after seeing the evidence. Well, no, none of the, uh, the charges are in any way held up. What, what held up was that they stood within 20 meters of They a, broke of a, a court order. Can, can I just say there's outrage around the country at what has happened tonight? A Rubicon has been crossed, particularly for the likes of the Labour Party whereby residents protesting in their communities against an austerity measure, against the hated water charges, have now been jailed, combined with the dawn raids that took place in Tala during the week. Mm. It, it's, it's unbelievable. It's already been pointed out. No banker, no yeah. developer who brought the country to yeah. financial ruin. I'm, I'm going to raise those, those pro points with Lorraine Higgins in a moment, but if I could just stick with the point here, which is that there was a court order, these people knew that there was a court order and they knew these were the, the potential consequences. And I think their barrister said uh, they were aware of the court's order, they were aware of the potential consequences. Mm -hmm. So if they knew what they were doing and they knew that this was inevitable, if they kept doing it, it's difficult to, s and, and to see. And they're right to do it. Because an injunction imposed in the interest of a big business but against the, the democratic is, will is... of the majority of people who oppose the water charges in this country, they were perfectly within their rights to continue to protest. This was, was an attempt to break an effective protest, a peaceful protest, but and the point, we have to defend the right to protest. But the point that the judge made in court today was that the workers involved have a right, a constitutional right, to go about their lawful business. Yeah, they do, but, and, but you, there's no mandate for the introduction of the water meters or water the, charges. But, that, and but can I just legally say, that's not the point, because legally the point yeah. is that there is a, a, a constitutional right for the workers to do their job, and there's a constitutional obligation on the people who were jailed today to obey an uh, injunction. And of there's court. a right for communities to protest as well against austerity and against the water charges. And unjust laws have always had to be challenged in this country. So and an I unjust salute. law can be broken. And I tell you, I think what's going to happen now is on Saturday at two o'clock at the central bank, communities are going to converge from all around Dublin,
from around Leinster and many areas okay. to protest at what's going on because they can see that there's one law for the rich and another for the poor. Well, can I put that point to Lorraine Higgins? You're a representative here of the Labour Party uh, and a lot of people will be agreeing with exactly what Ruth Coppinger is saying. Uh, no regulator, no politician, no banker has had their collar felt or sent to prison, but these protesters straight off to the joy with them. Well, I, that is a very fair point, David. There's no question about that. But there is a, a deficit in our legislative uh, armour when it comes to legislation and enacting it in order to, to cover off these eventualities. Well, that's eventualities. the fault of the Oroctus for introducing well, laws that can be used well, against protesters, but not introducing well, this laws is something that, can be that we have to look at. This is something that we have to look at. But we have to look at what happened today. When it came to the protesters, they weren't jailed for peacefully protesting. They were jailed for stopping people working. There's laws of this land that need to be upheld, and they quite willfully broke those laws, knowing what uh, the sanctions were going to be and we cannot act as it with impunity and the courts can't either and the judge had given them every um, every possibility to, to evade jail um, but these people in fairness um, senator I mean these people may well feel that they've no other option because they feel the government simply isn't listening to them and some of them may well have voted for your party in the last election on the understanding that you were completely opposed to the introduction of water charges well do you not think David that you know their voices have been heard the large majority of people who had went out and protested back in October there were hundred thousand people on the streets we acted on foot of those protests they then were whittled down to 50,000 people on the streets in December 15,000 people okay, well, were on the streets I don't a number want to get into weeks a numbers ago. game because no, you can argue but, that but either it is, but it is it's very important. We have to see the way it's it's falling off. But speaking of numbers, how many? How many? Speaking of numbers, speaking of numbers, realistically, the authorities can't lock everybody up. There isn't enough space in the prison. Well, not everybody is looking to to bend the laws of this land. The protesters that were jailed today are those that were walking within 20 metres of the installation. They were well aware of the injunction that was in place. Some of them were given a suspended sentence last November. They chose to ignore that and willfully ignore that. And it's it's too bad that people will be going about their work uh, for Irish Water and will be in a situation where they feel intimidated and harassed on a daily basis as a result of the actions of these people. Because you have to remember, David, you know, well, when, they, these, when these as, matters... As Ruth Coppinger pointed out, like, this is an injunction about uh, coming within a certain uh, distance of people. It seems a bit draconian, doesn't it? Well, it's, it was the only answer, obviously, that the judge, who's absolutely impartial, came up with. And at the end of the day, you know, this had to be proven beyond all reasonable doubt in order to, to jail the protesters today. And obviously the evidence was such that it satisfied that threshold. What, what people have seen in the last week is political policing of communities around it's Dublin rubbish. and this will be implemented. Well, two of the seven people the, that are up in front of the court were let The idea, the separation sorry, of sorry, 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 the the idea that there's a separation now between the government the courts and the Gardaí well, is why absolutely were, Why were two of the seven ludicrous. accused let out, let out then, let off? Because they, were, they couldn't substantiate the charges. So but there was the, evidence against the other five? The, the evidence was a video evidence of them standing near a water meter. And we can get bogged down here, but that is the actual charge that was brought against Yeah, but there was evidence against well, them. The key point is, Lorraine Higgins has said something unbelievable. Your party went and spent hundreds of thousands of euros saying that you were opposed to water charges. You went into government and you betrayed people in an unbelievably cynical fashion. And you're turning around tonight saying, oh, it's too bad that residents are in jail. It's part no, of the memorandum. It's, your fault it's misleading of you. It's part of the memorandum of understanding with the IMF. You well, well why remember that. Well, you know, when uh, parties go into coalition, there's give and take. And at the end of the day, you know, it was a situation which was part of the IMF deal. We had to honour that, unfortunately. But why did um, you say in your uh, election manifesto that you wouldn't? Well, this was a situation, as I said, that w it was beyond our control ultimately. These so things happen. The These things happen, David. But we didn't have economic sovereignty in this country whatsoever. It we've was, restored it child benefit, be we've increased it, be, we've taken sorry, right. okay, 320,000 yeah, people out of the universal one, social one, one charges. But I deal in facts, not fairy people, tales, Ruth. The fact is the child benefit has it's been, been cut and the Labour Party it was increased in the budget. going around. It was increased by five euro when 25 this euro was, the was first taken budget in the last in numbers. Lorraine, let's be honest, people aren't stupid. Oh. Labour in particular has betrayed people. And you said there that this will somehow cow people, it won't. Okay. In March the 21st, there'll be a massive, I'd say, the biggest protest okay. ever, and on Saturday as okay, well. You've, you've got well, the ad in well, the Well, given, given the fact that your protest figures have, have dwindled off from 100,000 back last October down to 15,000 in recent weeks, I'm meeting people in the grounds, uh, on the ground in Galway East. Uh, it's now no longer the issue you think it is. Lorraine, okay. people well, will boycott we the will, water. We will, there is we will find out. I'm afraid we have to leave it there. We'll find out. I'm afraid we have to leave it there. But, Deputy Senator, thank you. Miriam.
That's it for tonight. You can keep up to date with the latest news in RT News now. The late debate on RT Radio 1 right now with Keelan Shanley. We'll be discussing the Taoiseach's interview earlier on this programme. For now, though, from David, myself, everyone on Primetime, thanks so much for watching and Ihawa. After the break tonight on RT1, Dara and Ed's great big adventure kicks off in Arizona.